Adventure. Adventure, intrigue, mystery, romance, starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall. Together in the sultry setting of tropical Havana and the mysterious islands of the Caribbean. Bold Venture. Once again, the magic names of Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall bring you Bold Venture and a tale of mystery and intrigue. Taylor, come here a minute. How close can I get? I've been sitting on the arm of your chair. You've been using my hip pocket for an ashtray. Look at this. Here in the newspaper. Yeah, I've been looking at it. He's a doll. Out of a field of 50 contestants, Herman Hackenschmidt was today crowned Mr. Teaneck, New Jersey. Gee, what pretty teeth. Oh, not the pinup boy, this item. The one about the guy who inherited $100,000 from his Uncle Jerome. Hmm, 100000 What would you do if you had all that money, Slate? Oh, I got it all planned. I'd take it to a bank, change it into small bills, and run through it barefooted. I'd do a nice barefoot poker on $5 bills, Slate. Am I invited? On the one dollar bill, Sailor, I wouldn't want you to... Hold that pose, you two. It belongs in the winner's circle. Well, look, Slate, it's the tiny man with a king-sized baritone. How's the jockey dodge, Mickey? Can't complain, Philly. At Oriental Park, they're betting me and not the quadrupeds. I own Havana. That's a big package for a little man like you, Mickey. Can you hear me okay, you two? My voice has got so far to go from down here for me to up there to you. Well, we'll listen close. What's on your mind? I want you to... I said do me a favor, huh? About the key. Why didn't I think of it myself? About the key. What key, Mickey? Maybe I ain't talking loud enough, huh? The key for the locker at the Havana bus terminal. Now we know, sailor. The key for that locker. Huh? I got a parcel checked there. I ain't got time to run down for it now. Oh, it begins to dawn, Slate. So if I ain't back in a couple of days, you take care of it for me. You take it, Slate, and don't lose it. I'll put it on my key ring. By the way, what's in the parcel? Just some frayed riding silks, Slate. I'm so fond of them. If someone tried to take them away from me, I'd kill them. Kill them where it hurt. Yeah. Where's a man going to get frayed riding silks these days? A happy day to you both. You don't know how much you did for me. Hiya, Millie. How's old Red? Come on in. You gonna stay long enough to sit down? Can't do it, honey. What about that jockey, Mickey? Oh, look, Red, I- I've been chasing him all over town. He throws a look over his shoulder and runs. How fast can he run with a hundred grand on him? Big kid are you. You've got to get that money, baby. Jockey went into a place called Shannon's. He talked with a man for a long time. Buddy kind of talk. And then cagey. Did you get close enough to hear? Oh. And... So I paraded so this man the jockey was talking to could see me. Got so I owned a corner of his eye. He'll remember me when he sees me again. He'll like me. Be gentle with him, Millie. Depends upon his mood. Gentle. If this guy knows anything about the hundred thousand, he might just wind up where the cats can look at him. So be nice. Pity him. I'll see when I get there. Look, Slate, why don't we just pick up Mickey's package and bring it home? Paying rental on it wasn't part of the agreement. Uh, you heard what the little fellow said. Kill anyone who'd take his silk pants away from him. We'll leave him at the bus terminal. That way we can frolic without a care. Sure. What's 20 centavos a day to a big man like you? Oh, for four nickels a day, I stay alive. At the current rate, that's cheap. Besides, walking the Something Havana like streets... this, it makes me hate myself. Hi, Shannon. Huh? Oh, Hi. I remember you from somewhere, stranger. Let's see, uh, you were straightening a seam in front of my place yesterday. Yeah. 
Same scene. He finally got it straight, huh? That's not why I hate myself. It's just that I'm such an honest girl. I don't have the price of a dream, and I'm honest. Here, you drop this. What? This hundred-dollar bill, you dropped it. All you have to do, Shannon boy, is believe you dropped that money and listen. You see how easy it is? A hundred dollars and no pain. For a hundred bucks, you can throw in a little pain. Who does he have to listen to? It's written on the bill. Red wants to see you, Shannon. Red, huh? You got a sister? There's only one of me, Shannon. Red says it's easier for him to talk to people who have money. He says they listen better that way. I'm a sucker for psychology, Millie. Let's go and let Red whisper in my ear. Now, without me, you don't. Without you, sailor. And without me, Shannon. You earn your dough in a lonesome way. That's how it is. Yeah. Bye, girls. You made me a happy fellow, the both of you. <laughs> name's Shannon, you come right in. Thanks. Who's he? Can't miss him, can you? He's that big. Tell him your name, cabby. Juan de Casco Gabriel, my name. He wouldn't tell you, only I told him to. That right, cabby? What do you say, senor? You're going to give me some more money, redhead? Say, you noticed it, huh? My hair, red. But look, look right here, I'm losing it. It worries me. What are you buying, red? Talk. I'm buying words like an editor. <laughs> Editor, I know what he's that. Buys words. Oh, he's a clever one. Just chock full of IQs. Only not so smart as a jockey named Mickey Brennan. Shannon, baby, Mickey talked to you. What'd he say? Well, let's see if I can remember. Oh, yeah, it was about horses, withers and quarters, hind and fore, teeth, age of, you know. You gonna give me another hundred for that? You go to the movies, Shannon? Not another hundred, huh? Oh, I'm real disappointed, Red. In the movies, they point guns. Like this. Think I did that good, Cabby? <laughs> bueno, bueno, good. Like in movies, just like fine. I got time. Time, patience. Let's do it all over, Shannon. What'd the jock tell you? I gotta find out for a fella. Mickey said Rover Boy in the fifth was a dog. Cabby. Hey. Si. Senor, do not struggle with Gabriel. Please, do not... You know the language better than that, Shannon. What did Mickey say? No. Show him the second reel. Put down that gun and I'd... No more movies, Senor Ed. Yeah, not much fun either. The hero had a glass jaw. If a girl walked up to you and gave you a hundred dollar bill she said you dropped, what would you do? <laughs> what would I do? I'd say, <laughs> King Moses, boy, don't cry, don't frown. Miss Santa Claus, she come to town. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. What is it with men, King? As it has always been, the money whispers. In my day, a girl could catch a fellow's eye by dropping her handkerchief. But a C-note under his nose... Oh, it's a tired world. Mr. Slate will come back to you, Lady Sailor. He has been gone often longer than this. He will come, touch the hurt from your mouth, and... Hurt? Did I hear somebody say hurt? Pretty word. Yeah, you did. People hear words like that when they don't knock. Uh, she's a cutie, ain't she, Cabby? As you say, Senor Red, a cutie, an hermosa. Red, you must be the redhead Slate when calling on. You boys have fun? It was crummy. A crummy time was had by all. Where's Slate? Me first, cutie. I ask things first. You had a caller the other day, Mickey Brennan. What pearls drip from Mickey Brennan's mouth? We talked about horses. Let's see. Forelocks, fetlocks. You and Shannon ought to be in vaudeville, cutie. You got the same routines. Now I ask you with my hand on your tender arm. No answer breaks it. Leave her alone, you. Take your hand from her. Get his hands off me, Cabby. They're rough to the touch. This here, Red. Come away, little boy. This is for grown-ups. Let go. Let go. Don't choke him to death, Cabby. Leave him some breath to live on. Well, cutie. That's what you did to Slate, huh? Paid him a hundred bucks so you could sick Cabby on him and watch. What's the matter, cutie? You jealous? Don't be jealous. I might tell Cabby to let it happen to you. (laughs) 
Nice. Senor, you are awake, senor. What? Huh? I did not mean to disturb your sleep, senor, but Gabby, Gabby likes to practice on the drum in his room. Oh, then it was not my head. Oh, no, senor. Was Gabby on the bongo. One day in regular orchestra I play. You see, maybe even four pieces. Uh, help me up. Oh, see, si, see, si. come on, come on. Do you see him in the corner, senor? Mickey. Mickey Brennan. He's dead, senor. Killed dead. Uh, bullet holes where they used to be polka dots. Okay, Cabby, where am I? Where is this place? Cabby's room, as I have explained. In Hotel Cavallo. Cavallo? Where the bookies meet the jockeys by the sea. Red told you to keep me here, huh? If you would try to walk through that door, I would beat you very bad. Only this time no one's holding a gun on me. No matter, I would beat you. Oh, senor, Cabby almost forget. Senor Red said to give you that which is yours. A wallet, key ring, a little black book. So if I'm found as a corpse, the police will know who should grieve for me. Thanks. And this $100 bill that is yours. $100? Senor Red said it was yours. You said $100 like it hurt you. Oh, mucho dinero. A lot of money. Nice things. Silk things to buy. Here. You can hold it a little while longer. Now go ahead, cabby. Touch it. Feel it. Go ahead. Senor. Si, si. Yeah. Feel this too. Beat you, beat you. Try this one on your bongo. Ah. Get up, cabby. I got a real tricky rhythm I can show you. See, si. I cannot. See, si, I try. I cannot. My head. Oh, what a shame about your head. See you later, Cabby. But you cannot go. Senor Red said to keep you here. He'll be angry. Kill you. Kill you. Our stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, and the second act of our story. I tell you, I'm not hurt, Slate. King Moses was the one who had the bad time. They hurt you, King? It feel like I have long, thin neck where once I had short, broad one. You'd better go goggle again, King. In a little while. I wish now to look at you and enjoy the fact that you have not been harmed. Now, you don't know how lucky you are, sailor. That big guy could have broken you in half. You know, it's a funny thing. The way Cabby looked at me, gently like he was sorry for me. I almost had the feeling that if Red had told him to hurt me, he wouldn't have done it. Oh, you're just a big dimple on the cheek of Havana, sailor. Children stop at play when they hear your name. From age 16 on up, Miss Sailor. <laughs> oh, fellas. And you convinced him you didn't know anything about Mickey, huh? Well, look who's coming, the police. They must have found Mickey dead. What are you going to tell them? King will tell them. He'll goggle it at them. Let's hit the back alley, sailor. I think you're out of your mind, Slate, coming here to the bus depot. It's the first place the police would look for you. Sure, it's the first place they'd look for a common criminal, but I've taken great pains to build up a reputation in Havana. The way I figure it... Give me a nickel. What? Five cents. I want to buy a paper to see if they spelled your name right. Thanks. Hey, look at this, Slate. Uh, how do you like that? They picked up Cabrillo when they found Mickey, and Cabrillo implicated me. I guess I was right not waiting for cop talk. But you're right in wanting to get Mickey's riding silks out of the locker, huh? 
A jockey's uniform and a locker. That's the greatest clue of all time. <laughs> Sherlock would drool at them out. I've got the key. Come on. Uh, let's see. Here it is. Number 68. Now, let's see what's so important. Are they peeping at you too, sailor? Holy, all that money. Tens, twenties, fifties. Stop sniffing them, sailor. You'll tear them. Hey, let's get these beauties out of sight. Any great ideas now, Slate? Yeah. Listen to me. You told me Cabby looked at you like he liked you, didn't he? Well, I've seen the look before. Get into that jail and talk to him. Find out what this is all about. Give the look back to him. Do something. Make him tell you now what he knows. All right. What are you going to do? Something that's just got to be done. I'll pick you up in front of the main monument. Well, don't just stand there, sailor. Your date's waiting for you in jail. It was downright sweet of you, God, to let me see my little old cabrio in his little old cell. I'll cherish the memory always. Don't bang a jail door on me, Chico. I'm a taxpayer. Prison doors do not close with polite, senorita. Hi, Cabby. Buenos dias, senorita. You don't even sound surprised to see me. Oh, I am, senorita. But I do not know the words to express it. Uh, I am very ignorant. On you, it's attractive. Oh, you say that because I sit in the shadow. You cannot see my face. The hands that almost did hurt you. Forget it, Cabby. A fellow has to make his way in the world somehow. That is exactly how Senor Red talked to me. Where is your buddy, pal? Why isn't he here holding your hand like a chum? Oh, he could not do that, senorita. He took a powder, he and senorita Milly. Or they take a nice powder together, those two. And left you holding a great big bag with a dead jockey in it. See, si, see, si, but they gave me company, senor Shannon. So I would not be lonely with the bag all to myself. Slate and I could be your friends, cabby. All you'd have to do is tell us what this is all about. That way you could go free. I tell you nothing. Senor Red say to tell nobody nothing, Gabby. You could practice your bongo. Maybe even play with a four-piece outfit. Slate told me how talented you were. I talented. Four pieces. No. Senor Red say no. I say no. You know how I got in to see you, Cabby? I told them I was your girl. To see me? You say such a thing? I'll be your girl, Cabrio. I'll come every night and listen to you on the bongo. You say you, my girl? Much money has been stolen by the jockey and Senor Red wanted for a man. What man? I don't know what man. Go ask Joe Nevada, shooting guard at Avenida Marquis. Ask him what man. Now go, Senorita, before I beat you till you forget what I tell you. <laughs> Cops, murders, stolen money. A girl really lives the full rich life with you, doesn't she, Slate? Girls live how they want to live because they're made of sugar and spice. Girl told me that once. You never told me about that one. You quiet, sailor. Can't you see Mr. Nevada is concentrating? Three bullseyes. Nice shooting, Nevada. Glad it excited you. Lay down a quarter and you can pop off too. Still making book in the back of Havana's grocery slips, Nevada? That's your answer? That means yes, huh? That means if you ain't got the price of admission, go away, kid. Mickey Brennan stole things from people. Maybe you can tell me who, Nevada. That one excite you, Shannon? It sent quivers up his spine. Sure did. Know a fellow named Red, Nevada? Where's a fellow named Cabby on his sleeve? Look, kid, I could turn this 22 away from the ducks and make you ring a bell that'll call people to prayer. Yeah. Let's go, sailor. Where to now, Slate? There's only one place left. The Hotel Cavalla. Where a guy shot a jockey dead and then beat his funeral march on my head. Don't hit me. Don't hit me, senor. I am trying to explain. All you've said so far is that you were the new clerk here at the Cavallo. You're not doing real good on your job, Chico. Ask him again about the safe slate. 
Why such a big new one for such a small flea bag? You heard it, Chico. I was here a while ago, and there was a small safe over there. What happened to it? Yesterday, the tenants of the Cavallo opened the old one, and it gave back only a cold stare. What tenants? Those who live here, the bookies. Such a safe is much safer than a bank. Don't you see, Slate? Bookies. They keep their money in this hotel safe. Think we've got enough, Slate? Sure. Come on. Now, the way it looks, our jockey is a thief. Little Mickey heisted... He sure did, Shannon. Now, just keep walking. Or the redhead's gonna blast you all over the pavement. How does it feel to kill a jockey, Red? A good feeling. I like it. Open the door. There's somebody here I want you to meet again. Millie, look what I brought you. Wow. Slate Shannon. Mind if I blush with joy? You can still think of a reason to blush, Millie? Such nasty words for a girl who's almost dead. You two have got one more chance. The hundred grand, where is it? I want to tell you something that'll worry you, Red. You had that money and you didn't know it. What's he saying, Red? Tell us, Shannon. When you had me worked over, you should have taken a look at my key ring. One of the keys was for a locker. Locker, money. Red, how does a man get as stupid as you? A hundred thousand dollars like that. You had it in your fingers and you let it dribble through them. Millie, you crazy? You got out of your mind? Millie, put away that gun! Millie, don't you dare do what he says. Turn around, Red. I said turn around. This is for now. You see, sailor, why I never turn my back on a girl? As pistol whippers go, I think Millie did that quite well. Give me the key, Slate. All right, take it easy. Give it to me. Mickey Brennan's dead because he stole that money. It's got to get back to me. Well, what about the guy it belongs to? Forget about that. Give. <gasps> you going to forget about me, Millie? Hi, Nevada. Who's taking care of the shooting gallery? Ducks are tired of being shot at. I put them to pond. Millie, are you going to forget about me? Look, Sh Shannon's got the key. He, he knows where the money is. Why is Red lying on the floor? Is he tired? Millie made him tired with the butt end of a forty-five. Ooh, what a tattletale. You wanted that dough for yourself, Millie. No, you've got to listen to sure, me. Sure, sure, I will. Throw your gun away, Millie. On the floor. Throw it away. <gasps> the dead girl said you had a key, Shannon. Let's go use it. To find a hundred grand. You know, I'm glad it's late. Not many people in the bus station. That's good. People ought to go to bed early. Keeps them out of trouble. Mind if I ask you something? My pleasure. Why didn't you just kill us and take the key? Why do you trouble the man with such stupid questions? The man has to make sure the money is where we say it is. Shrewd. You sparkle, Shannon. Locker 68. Ain't that what you said? That's right. Here's the key. Open it. Open it, Shannon, or this gun in my pocket will go off. Ruin my suit and you. It's all yours. A hundred thousand bucks. Let me look at it. Same to you. Duck sailor. <laughs> You ruined your suit coat, kid. Uh, kid, you where's that money? You may never know. I hate to interrupt your moment of glory, Slate, but uh, now may I ask you a question? Sure. What? Where is that money? Oh, did I forget to tell you? I took it back to the hotel. It's on my office floor, spread out. Oh, you didn't wait for me. Still there until the cops call for it. Let's go home and take off our shoes, sailor. <laughs> Slate. Uh huh. Did you see this? The front page of tonight's paper. Well, Slate Shannon's picture on the front page. I don't like that picture, though. That's the one I gave to the papers. I like it. 
What's the matter with it? I got better pictures than that. This one's in a turtleneck sweater you knitted for me. You can hardly see my face. Of course you can see your face. See? That's your face. Why didn't you give them the one of me on the surfboard with the two girls on my shoulder? Then who'd look at your face? Come here, sailor. I don't know what I'd do with that. Why didn't you send that portrait of me in the yachting cap and the pipe and the far away look in my eyes? Oh, you mean the one you sent to the Lonely Hearts Club? I didn't... Did you send him that picture? Yeah. I came back with a rejection slip. Come here. Reject. And so our two stars, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall, have brought to a close our latest Bold Venture story. Special music was composed and conducted by David Rose. May we invite you to listen again next week at this time for another exciting adventure starring Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall together in Bold Venture. 